everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Come on. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. That's right. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Hi, how are you? I hope if you can, you can share or have a watch party, invite people to listen to the Bible class for today because we want everybody to know who Jesus is and how God works. And he works the same today that he did yesterday and forevermore. My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? What's your name? How do you do? And what's your name? How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? All right. Well, I'm, I'm having a great day. Um, Mr. Producer, I think I need you to raise the camera for me. Put it, put it on the other thing. Yep. Anyway, I'm having a great day and I hope that you're having a great day too. Somebody told me, I can't see your face. Let's see if that changes the perspective. I think you can see a little better now. So, I saw Mr. MJ was here, Miss Erica, Miss Danita, Miss Charlotte. I see Miss Jackie is here, Messiah and Danielle and Frederica and Joy and the crew. I am so glad that you all are here today. We have a good, we're going to talk about Moses. A great account of what happened in his life. Oh, wow. We could, we could spend the, the rest of the year talking about Moses. We're not. But man, was he special to God. And you're special to God, too. So make sure you keep listening for the voice of God and do what God says. Sometimes you might have to go a little scared. Not scared that God won't do it, but sometimes, you know, we get a little scared of, can we do it? But if we trust God, we'll, we can do it. Why? Because he goes ahead of us. Yes, he makes a way for us. We can do it. If he gives us an assignment, we can do it. So let's start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you uh, that you have just made a way for us. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us. We thank you that you are constantly with us. You are our constant companion, Lord. And I thank you that we stay in communication with you, that we, we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We abide there. We stay there with you, listening for your voice throughout our day. Thank you and bless us. And bless everyone that hears this lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I told you, our lesson today is about Moses. So we're going to Exodus, the first chapter. And we're going from the, we're going to talk about the first through the seventh verses in Exodus. And we're going to go in the NLT version, which is a, a, a little easier for you guys to understand. I am a K, what is it? KG, a KJV person, King James Version. I just love the way that flows. But for those of you, okay. Well, anyway, in uh, Exodus, 
in Exodus, the first chapter, and Moses wrote this. God inspired him later to write this. He wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and that's it. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Mm -mm. I'm forgetting one. Why, why didn't you tell me? What about Genesis? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay, so he wrote the first five. So anyway, um, the, the, there were uh, the children of Israel, God's chosen people. They came from 12 tribes. And right where we are, right here in the first chapter of Israel, there had been a famine going on. And Joseph, one of the 12 children of Israel, he was over Egypt. He was over the food and how it went out. And so that's a, that's a whole nother account. And so anyway, uh, they were in uh, Egypt. And they lived in this land called Goshen. Well, anyway, they were doing well. They were doing well, doing well, doing well, doing well. And by this time, all the brothers had died. All 12 of the brothers. There was Reuben was the eldest of the children of Israel with Simeon and Levi. There is a song to go with that. Anyway, there was Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, and Joseph. He lived there, so they had died off. But when they came from when they came to Egypt, there were 70 of them that came, plus Joseph. Well, now Joseph and his brothers, they, they died off. But the children of Israel, there were many of them. And they were multiplying and multiplying greatly. Now, there came a new Pharaoh in Egypt. And he didn't know Joseph. He didn't know about Joseph. He had not heard about Joseph. But he saw all these children of Israel. And uh, he, he didn't like what was going on. Not one bit. He was like, mm-mm. You know what? We have to do something with them because they just keep multiplying. They're going to become mightier than we are. And uh, should they decide, somebody decide to come and fight us, they'll take their side. So he assigned taskmasters and they were slaves. And Israel, the Israelites had to build the storage cities for them. And, they, and then the taskmaster would put more affliction on them, trying to make it harder for them. Just... Oh, just making it very, very bad for them. But the more they afflicted them, the more the Israelites multiplied and the more they spread. Now, the Israelites were who? God's chosen people. Who were the Israelites? God's chosen people. God just picked them because he wanted them. And they were his chosen people. Now, the Egyptians were treating God's chosen people wrong. And uh, they were just multiplying and becoming stronger and bigger and bigger. Just more and more and more and more and more. But the Egyptians, um, they made their lives hard. They made them build things with mortar and brick. And they had to labor hard and they worked rigorously. Then the king, you know, and they kept multiplying. They weren't dying off. They were multiplying. So then the king came up with this wise idea. He decided, oh, you know what we're going to do? When the women have babies, when they have boys, we're going to kill the boys and let the girls live. So there were two midwives, Shifra and Pua. And he told them, when the women have boys, kill the boy babies and let the girls live. But the midwives feared God. Yes. They reverenced God. And some and you reverence God so that you do. You are afraid. You're afraid of doing the wrong thing. I don't want to do the wrong thing. Well, anyway, they feared God and they did not kill the babies. So then the king, he called them and he said, what have you done? Why have you allowed these boys to live? And so the Hebrew women, they said, uh, I'm sorry, not the Hebrew women, but the, the two midwives, they said, well, the, the the Hebrew women, they're more rigorous when they're having their babies. And by the time we get there to help them have the babies, the babies are born. So uh, God was good to the midwives 
because they did not kill those boy babies. And the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And because the women, those two women feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to kill all, to kill every newborn Hebrew boy. Just kill them, put them in the Nile River, and drown them. Isn't that horrible? Just heartless. Well, anyway, in Exodus, the second chapter, so we're doing the NLT version and the MKV version, Miss Karen version. So, uh, in Exodus, the second chapter, while this was going on, there was a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi. And the woman became pregnant and she had a baby. And she hid this baby for three months. It was a baby boy and she hid him for three months. But she couldn't, you know, I'm sure he started getting louder and making noise and crying and she couldn't keep him any longer. So she made a basket and she waterproofed it as much as she could with what they call tar and pitch and the water wouldn't seep through that. And she put the baby in the basket and she laid it amongst the reeds, these tall things along the bank of the Nile River. And she put the baby on the Nile River. And she and the baby sister, the baby sister, which is the older sister, her name is Miriam. She watched her baby brother go down the Nile River. Now the baby sister, she watched to see what happened. Soon... Pharaoh's daughter came down to take a bath. Where? In the Nile River. In the Nile's River. So her attendants walked along the riverbanks. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying. She felt so sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby, the baby sister, Miriam, who was walking along, watching where the baby was going, she ran out and she said, um, should I go find one Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Miriam, the baby sister, asked the Pharaoh's daughter if she should go find somebody to nurse the baby. And the Pharaoh's daughter said, yes. So the baby sister went and got who? The baby's mother. And the baby's mother's name is Jacobed. She went and got the baby's mother. She went and got her mother to nurse her baby brother. And um, anyway, so she took the baby and she, uh, she said, take this baby and nurse him for me. And uh, she told, she told Jacobet, she, she told, <laughs> this is the funny part. Miriam went and got the baby's mother. And then the, the Pharaoh's daughter said, I want you to nurse the baby for me and I'll pay you to take care of him. So Jacobet got paid to take care of her son. Isn't that something? That's just like God. Mm -hmm. Here. They think they're doing one thing, but God is working it out, it out for you. Isn't it, is he going before you? Mm, he went ahead of him. Anyway, so she took, so the woman took her baby home. She got to take her baby to her house. So the baby grew up in the house. Now the baby's name, oh. She didn't name him till right now. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who had adopted him as her own son. And the princess named him Moses. For she explained, I lifted him out of the water. Yeah, isn't that great? So Jacobed kept him as long as she could. He was about three months. She made that basket for him. It floated on the water and floated to the, the princess of Egypt. Then Miriam said, do you need a nurse? Miriam goes, gets Moses' mother. And Moses' mother nursed him and she trained him. She let him know who he was. He knew that he was an Israelite. She didn't train him in the ways of royalty. She trained him in the ways 
of the Israelite. She taught him things. And so um, he knew. Well, many years later when Moses had grown up, he went to visit his people, the Hebrews, and saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. Because, see, even though he was raised like a prince, an Egyptian, he knew who he was. And he saw that Egyptian beating up a fellow Hebrew person, uh, a Hebrew male. And so guess what? After looking in all directions, so he sees this fight, he's looking in all directions, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day when Moses went out to visit the people again, he saw two Hebrews fighting. And they said, why? And then he said to them, why are you beating up on each other? And one man replied, replied, who appointed you to be prince and judge over us? Are you going to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? He thought nobody saw that. But that Hebrew guy saw that. Then Moses was afraid, thinking everybody knew. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard about it. And he tried to kill Moses. So Moses fled. He left. He left Egypt and went to live in a land, uh, it's called Midian. And we heard about the Midianites er of earlier in our lessons, but that's, it's Genesis, Exodus. So we heard about the Midianites in uh, Judges. So anyway, that's where Moses went. And uh, God was just with him. God was with him from his birth all through this, all through this, all through this. When God has a calling on your life, keep your ear near. And sometimes you don't quite know that God has got a direction for you. But you just, you're just kind of pushed in a direction. You're pushed in a way. Moses didn't know that he was going to be who he became. But he was kind of pushed in that direction. He was just going along with it. And sometimes we go along with life. You need to go along with life listening for the voice of God. Sometimes he'll give you an appetite for something. You don't even know why you like it. But later on in life, you'll have to use that thing that you, you used to like way back when. Well, anyway, uh, that's what happened in our lesson for today. So Moses, the, no, the children of Israel, they were living in Egypt. They were multiplying, multiplying. A new Pharaoh came. He didn't know about Joseph. He didn't know how the Pharaoh with Joseph loved him and put him second in command. He didn't know about that. But he saw these children of Israel multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. He tried to kill the boy babies. It did not work. Then Jacobed uh, made a basket for her son. The son flows down the Nile River into the princes of Egypt and then she gives him to Jacobed to nurse. He goes back and he grows up and then he things happen and he ends up leaving and going to Midian. That is our lesson for today. Just setting you up for things. He was taught the ways of the Hebrews. His mother taught him and you can tell. She taught him. And so that goes back to our memory verse from last week. We're just going to add on to that memory verse from last week. Okay? But before we go to our memory verse, we have to do our song, don't we? I thought I'd put the new song up here. And the old song is here. But we're going to sing this song because how limited is God? Anybody know? Is God limited? What are God's limits? What can he not do? God can do anything. So I was singing a song today. Yep, you know, and it, when I started thinking about God and his goodness and what he can do and how he watches out for us and how he goes before us and how he protects us whew, and how he makes a way for us, I started thinking God can do anything but fail. Yes, he can. All right, I see Deshaun and Dewan are here. Yes, God is unlimited. God can do anything. 
God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. He can save, he can heal. It's all according to his will. God can do anything but fail. Come on. God can do anything, anything, anything. Oh, God can do anything but fail. He can save, he can heal. It's all according to his will. Oh, God can do anything but fail. Anything, 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 anything. Oh, God can do anything but fail. Anything. Anything, 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 oh God can do anything but fail. Anything, he saved Moses while he was going down the Nile River. He can do anything but fail. He prospered, he prospered Moses in this, in his obedience, he prospered uh, uh, Moses. Wow, we'll we'll talk about that. All right, so our memory verse for last week we went over Proverbs one. I'm sorry, Proverbs three one and two. Remember. So today we're going to do Proverbs three. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. That's Proverbs three. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Do not let truth and kindness leave you. Bind them around your neck. Then the last part is write them on the tablet of your heart. Get it in your heart. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. That's it. You got it? Okay, I'm going to say the first part. You say the second part. And the second part is bind them around your neck. That's the second part. Here I go with the first part. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Now you say the first part. You say the first part and I'll say the second part. So you'll say, we'll say um, Proverbs 3 and 3. Because that's what verse this is. Proverbs 3 and 3. Do bind them around your neck. Again, do not. Bind them around your neck. One more time. Bind them around your neck. All right, so we're going to say it together. We're going to say both parts together, the first and the second part. Are we ready? Proverbs, here we go. Proverbs 3 and 3. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. That is it. All right, so let's do the whole thing. Let's do Proverbs 1, 2, and 3. Almost, it's almost all of 3, but it's not quite all of 3, but we're going to say 3. So here we go. Proverbs 3, 1 through 3. My child, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart.
All right, we'll go over that again tomorrow. We'll go over that again tomorrow. We'll talk a little more about Moses tomorrow. Okay, what's our fun song? Our fun song. Our fun song. What is our fun song? I saw fun songs going up before, but I hadn't asked for it then. So I'm I'm asking for the fun song right now. Hello, Larry and Elliot and Miss Quinetta. What is our fun song? Head and shoulders. Okay, head and shoulders, knees and toes. That's what we'll do, Lynn. Head and shoulder, knees and toes. Here we go. Let me move my chair. And where are you ready? I guess I'm ready. Oh, nope, I'm not ready. My head is cut off. Oh, that was a that Deborah Jackson thing right there. Okay, here we go. Head and shoulder. Okay. Head and shoulder, knees and toes. Head and shoulder, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and a mouth and a nose. Head, shoulder, knees and toes. Shoulder, knees and toes. Shoulder, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and a mouth. Shoulder, knees, and toes. I get confused. Knees and toes. Knees and toes. Eyes and ears and a mouth and nose. Knees and toes. 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 Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Toes. Woo! Woo! Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Knees and toes. All right, that was a good fun song. Good fun song. Well, I am so glad that you guys are here. I'm so glad that you got to hear about the um, the birth of Moses. Yes, we got to hear about the birth of Moses. Moses was so powerful, and we hear about him over and over, and how he moved by the power of God, how he obeyed God, and I pray that we learn to do the same thing. Obey God. You gotta learn to obey God. So, I just thank you so much and make sure you tell somebody else about Jesus and the goodness of God and God's love. It is so important that we share that good news. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone that listened and got to hear about Moses for the first time, got to hear about Moses and just be reminded of who you are, are and how powerful you are. And in spite of man's plan, your plan still stands. Yes. And thank you for that, God. And I pray that you bless the rest of their day in Jesus' name. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know.